United are about to go on pre-season tour to America and because of the World Cup, some academy players will be drafted in and given opportunities in the first team. Here's five youngsters that I expect to be on Manchester United's pre-season tour to America. In at number five then is Angel Gomez, perhaps the most obvious name on this list. The 2018 season wasn't great for Angel. Injuries slowed down the rapid progress that he's been making and besides a simple cameo in the League Cup in the first team, it was largely an uneventful season for the youngest United debutant since Duncan Edwards. A pre-season tour is the perfect opportunity for Angel to build on the two appearances that he currently has in the first team. And the lack of pressure on the team to perform in those games means that he's free to express his creativity against sides that will equally be a bit of a mixed bag. Angel's best position has been the topic of much debate. Now I've seen him liken to Ronaldinho because of his pace, which is madness to be honest with you. Angel is the most chilled out player I've seen since Paul Scholes and I think I've seen him run maybe once. He's a player with time on the ball and the vision and intelligence to spot a run and the ability to place it wherever he wants with laser accuracy. His agility in and around the box is a huge asset which means he's an advanced playmaker or possibly even a number 10. But the deeper that he goes and the more he gets involved with the build-up play the better. But he isn't a flying winger as I've seen him described. Angel has the talent to go to the very top so it's no surprise that he's on this list. In at number four then is Jimmy Garner. Now Jimmy was United's under 16 captain. He was the England under 17 captain at the recent Euros where his side were beaten semi-finalists and I expect him to be next season's under 18 captain too. Jimmy was nominated for the Jimmy Murphy Player of the Year award and out of the nominees he was the most deserving of the prize. A fantastic performance in his first year of the under 18s. Jimmy provides a real calming influence in midfield. He's also comfortable at centre half as well as centre midfield, and he's got a good range of passing and a real maturity to his play. This is one player that I think could really benefit from working closely with Michael Carrick. Their style is eerily similar. Jimmy could see action on tour in a number six role, but due to his age, I think they'll be limited to five to ten minute cameos, or possibly just playing that position in training and learning from those around him. But this is a real opportunity for Jimmy, and hopefully he takes it. In at number three, Tahith Chong. Now, Tahith did win the Jimmy Murphy Player of the Year award and he wasn't as undeserving as much as that. He didn't really play that much for the under-18s last season. He only featured in six matches, but he scored five goals identical to Angel and it felt like he transcended that side. The injury he sustained last season has undoubtedly affected his progression, but he's come back like he hasn't skipped a beat. I am very excited to see what he can offer to the first team. Chong is a super aggressive player. He's got a slight frame with skinny legs, but he's combative and deceptively tall. He's hyper direct and has the ability to go either side defender, which causes them absolute nightmares. He's predominantly left footed, but he has scored with both feet, which gives him that flexibility. He could also be our option on the right hand side on the tour, and I would expect him to cut along the face of the box like a young Ronaldo, or if he's played on the left, he loves to get to the byline and bang a crossing, which is sorely needed. He is a real talent. A player that, if given the opportunity, could pop into the first team squad with a couple of injuries and a little bit of luck. A good showing on the tour could leave a big impression on the manager. In at number two then is Roshan Williams. Now Roshan's name is known outside of those watching the youth, mainly because at 16 he broke the long-standing school's sprinting record, which was previously held by Mancunian Olympic sprinter and United fan uh, Darren Campbell. But to distill Roshan down to simply that is mess massively unfair, I think. The lad is a natural born leader. He was quickly drafted into the under 23 side before officially graduating. And from the stand, you could hear him geeing up, encouraging, and demanding more from everyone on the pitch. Alongside Axel Tuanzebe, he formed a formidable partnership. Roshan is a complete defender, comfortable in possession, clearly very quick, and that's an asset that's used when needed. Uh, he's better in the air than Axel, and he's an absolute warrior. He plays the game in a state of permanently being pissed off, almost with a scowl on his face constantly, but I absolutely love it. He's a winner. The talk about the lack of characters in a game? Nah. Roshan is a flashback to the 80s or the 70s. He's a hard, capable player that wouldn't look out of sorts in the Robbo era. He's one of my favourites, and I think he would be ready for a loan this season, and he'd be a real asset to any first team, probably at the championship level. But the ability is there. If a smaller Premier League team wanted to take him as, say, a backup centre-half, I would back him to go out there and impress. The one player that I really want to see on the tour, Mason Greenwood. Where to even begin with Mason? I first saw him when he was 13 playing on under 16s and he looked like Ronaldo. He's got a big frame. He's genuinely both footed as in that he takes penalties with either foot and he's a stone cold killer. Often played on either wing. He can also play as a number 10 but I can see him becoming an out and out number 9, a modern day number 9 as he develops. He's a serious footballer. He started last season's campaign as a 15 year old and he should have been player of the year. He finished the campaign with 17 goals and 6 assists in 17 starts. 
Whoa. I think we might see a lot more of him this summer, and once the season begins, this is a huge one for him. He is so good. His height means that there's a real chance that he could also overtake Angel in the race to become established. This would represent a shock inclusion on a tour, but he's every bit good enough. And what an opportunity this could be. We've got one of the genuine world talents on our hands here in Mason. Let's see how he develops. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to be doing player profiles on each of these lads, including match footage for the Patreon group. Now, I can't include those on YouTube because it'll get pulled for copyright, even though it's fair use and there's loads of scouting accounts out there. Uh, but I can do it on Patreon and also be doing the same thing for in-depth match previews for the first team on there too. Uh, that's using game footage and breaking down both what United and the opposition are likely to do. So if you'd like to support this channel uh, and get some extra content as well, as well as the first word on transfers or who's going on the tour because the Patreon group got told uh, two months ago, then come in and check out the Patreon page. The link is in the description below. And if you have any questions about the youth or anything like that, get them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, there's going to be a lot more content on this YouTube channel uh, for the youth next season. Uh, so get subscribed, turn the notifications on, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.